Good evening and welcome to our ongoing coverage of the Republican National Convention in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Joining us just a few minutes after the keynote speech from Senator Joe Lieberman is the Real News Analyst Pepe Escobar. Hi, Pepe. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Good. So I was struck by one line in uh, Senator Lieberman's speech uh, in particular, although I thought he was trying to hold back on some of the more aggressive rhetoric we've heard from in the last few weeks or months. Uh, particularly about Iran, Th there was one line that jumped out at me. He says, we need a president that our allies will trust and our enemies will fear. What, what did you make of Lieberman's speech? Well, I simply cannot see Nouri al-Maliki in Baghdad trusting John McCain. First of all, because Nouri, Nouri al-Maliki wants American troops out, just like most of the Iraqi population, Sunni, Shiites, and Ayatollahs stand in Najaf. And I cannot see Hu Jintao in Beijing or Vladimir Putin in Moscow fearing John McCain, especially after John McCain's embrace of Georgia in this last adventure, which McCain, advised by Randy Schuneman, was au courant. He knew exactly what was saying, what was happening, I'm sorry. And he started to spin that Russia invaded Georgia when it was the other way around. The Georgians started the whole thing, invading South Ossetia and destroying its capital. So tell us a bit about what J Lieberman, uh, give us some context for this speech, who he is and, and what, why, what, what, like he, uh, right in the beginning of the speech, he asked the question, what's a Democrat like me doing in a Republican convention like this? So what's, what is he doing there? Exactly. Uh, okay, we can define him as a Trojan horse or a fifth column, in fact. The Republicans obviously liked it because he came here basically to be a traveling salesman for, for Joe McCain. The real inside story is what we won't get, especially from the mainstream media. The real inside story is what reporters over here have been discussing for the past two days. The Bush family wanted Mitt Romney as the VP. And McCain wanted basically Lieberman. So there was a war between the Bush family and McCain. And the go-between was no one other than Cal Rove. Cal Rove, in fact, pressed by the Bush family, was trying to convince McCain to get Romney as the VP. In the end, McCain, in a typical gambling impulse, he chose Sarah Palin. And for the past two days, we have had the Sarah, the extraordinary, cosmically <laughs> soap opera story of Sarah Palin and Bristol Palin. The day of uh, Hurricane Gustav, yesterday in the convention, the real hurricane was Bristol the 17-year-old pregnant the daughter of Sarah Palin. So Lieberman came here, and uh, I've seen some of his speeches for the past few months, and I was expecting a lot of rhetoric, especially against Iran. Today we talked to John Bolton, and John Bolton practically advocated that Israel strikes Iran before the next president comes to power. Now, I was just, expecting, just, just I was sure. expecting John, something John, similar from Lieberman, and nothing happened. Yeah, let's just point out, John, for people that don't remember, John Bolton was Bush's appointee to the UN. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, um, Lieberman uh, himself, until very recently, uh, in fact, until tonight, had been talking about Iran. Uh, on the way towards nuclear weapons within a year or two. He, uh, he's, he and McCain have both been talking about uh, that Iran would then give these weapons to terrorists to come after America. Uh, we didn't hear any of that more inflammatory rhetoric tonight. Exactly. He didn't even talk about foreign policy. The only quote, this is, what, this is my handwritten notes, the only quote was about the surge, the success of the surge. And McCain, because McCain supported the surge from the beginning against uh, uh, public opinion in the U.S., and even uh, reticence from the White House in the beginning. And that was all, nothing. He didn't say anything about Russia, about China, and foreign policy uh, challenges. And uh, he, he praised uh, Sarah Palin, but very vaguely, just like uh, Fred, Fred Thompson, who spoke before Lieberman, was much more extensive in his praise of, of Sarah Palin. Now, what, one of the things... And, that, and Lieberman didn't say basically anything. So I, I detected a lot of frustration in his speech, in fact. There, there's one of the things that the mainstream media has completely ignored and, and seems to be allowing McCain to reposition himself, and tonight even Lieberman, because nobody comments on it. But Lieberman is co-chair of this organization called the Committee on the Present Danger. Uh, which is uh, co-chaired uh, with uh, by Senator Kyle, and the actual active ch ac active chairs are uh, uh, George Schultz and James Woolsey, former head of the CIA. This is Woolsey; he called for the bombing of Syria. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Lieberman, his connection to the neocon Schuneman, 
what that agenda is, because McCain isn't running on that agenda. You wouldn't know that's what he seems so connected with. Yes, absolutely. And Lieberman, Graham, and uh, Kill, they are all Israelis first, basically. So this agenda is basically the Likudnik agenda in the U.S. It's basically the Likud part in Israel. It's the Netanyahu agenda, which is against Oslo, against uh, a, 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 a comprehensive Palestinian-Israeli agreement. It's, uh, it's an agenda that uh, it, it, it's basically uh, derived from the project from the new American century. It's the same agenda for the past 10 years, actually, even when Bill Clinton was still president. What they want is a greater Israel. This is something that they will never say on the record in the U.S. and in the Middle East. Uh, you know, you can imagine the repercussions if, if it's uh, admitted in public. And obviously this passes uh, through uh, eliminating Iranian opposition to the agenda of greater Israel. This is what people like John Bolton, Neil Khan, former UN ambassador, they, because Bolton is not connecting to anybody at the moment, he can say that explicitly, as he told us today. We're going to see this interview in the next few hours. This is, but, this is Bolton saying, uh, supporting an, uh, an Israeli attack exactly. on Iran. Bo right? Bolton practically, yeah. is, uh, on the record, he practically said that he was expecting a an Israeli strike against Iran before the next president comes to power. But I think he's, the, he's the only one who can say that so openly you know, in the current political situation in the U.S. But I, I think it's also important to, to point out that this project for New American Century was, goes past Israel. It's about projecting American military might to reshape the entire world. Absolutely. And, and, and Israel is the advanced Sparta that will be conducting this ex American expansion in the Middle East, which passes through, you know, eliminating Hezbollah, eliminating Hamas, especially eliminating Tehran. Uh, and what, uh, what final thoughts do you have on, on Lieberman's speech? I'm sorry, Paul. Uh, could you repeat? Uh, I cannot hear you yeah, well. I'll try it again. Uh, final thoughts on Lieberman's speech tonight. Look, uh, he characterized McCain and Palin as two mavericks. This is, a, this is really incredible. This is the current uh, Republican Party narrative since uh, Palin uh, last, uh, last weekend and since Gustav yesterday and since the extraordinary scandal involving Palin's daughter. They are not mavericks. Uh, Palin has no national experience and no foreign experience. Let me ask you, that, uh, Pepe, let me ask you a question. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Because I, th I think much more significant than uh, uh, Palin's daughter, because lots of people's daughters get pregnant. I have, personally, I don't see why it's even considered a scandal. But, but the thing that I thought was more significant, that even s we did a report this morning that made it very clear that Palin lied about the uh, turning down the money for the bridge to nowhere. And then tonight, right. C CBS did the story, so it, it has broken through mainstream news. Is, it, is there any sense on the floor of the convention there, or people you're talking to, that no, pa Palin's been caught in a lie here? Today we spent like one hour on the floor talking to a lot of delegates, you know, Texans, uh, New Hampshire, Indiana, women, and also some men, and they all said the same. They were all repeating the same party line. No. Palin has executive experience because she's been governor of Alaska for two years. Uh, she's not corrupt. Uh, she's a mother. Uh, she's an example for the working families in America. They, you know, w w when you question, the, what about her foreign policy experience? Some people actually repeat the Cindy McCain and Laura Bush line. She has foreign policy experience because uh, Alaska, after all, borders Canada. And it's getting into a kind of a desperate housewives uh, uh, soap opera thing, which has no report with any reality whatsoever. And this is the party line. This is what everybody is repeating on the convention floor. Okay, well, tomorrow night after Palin's speech, let's talk again. I, 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 I assume she's going to speak tomorrow. She's apparently disappeared in the last two, three days, but I guess one uh, can we, only think it's, what it's we a heard serious today is briefing. That she was working on her speech today. Uh, uh, she, she's probably doing it as we speak now. Yeah. She will speak tomorrow night. She's the keynote speaker for Wednesday night at the convention. All right, thank you very much, Pepe. Thank you, Paul.